What's going on everybody, it's Game Unboxing Reviews here and welcome back to another LEGO Marvel's Avengers news update. Now today I have some very exciting handheld news for everyone, so for those of you who are going to be picking up either the PlayStation Vita or Nintendo 3DS version of the game, you're in luck because this version sounds extremely impressive. I mean I'm blown away by just how much they've actually been able to add to this version of the game. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so first up, before we start talking about the extremely exciting stuff, I just have a few things I need to mention. So first up, both the PlayStation VR and Nintendo 3DS version of the game are exactly the same, although obviously they do perform differently due to different hardware in their systems. However, it's still nice to know that whether you get the Vita or 3DS version, you're getting the exact same experience. So everything I mention in this video applies to both systems. Another thing to mention is that the PlayStation Vita version of the game is also fully compatible with PlayStation TV. So you'll be able to play the PlayStation Vita version of the game on both, obviously, PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV, which is really cool. And I've heard it looks great on PlayStation TV as well, which is nice to know. And also, uh, another thing to mention is that all future LEGO games that do appear on PlayStation Vita should be compatible with PlayStation TV. They've said that they always want to try and do that now because they know a lot of people like to to play that way so that's really good to know. So now we're going to be talking about the improvements that have been made to this game that makes it far superior to what has come before on handheld for the LEGO games. So first up, the handheld edition of the game will feature over a hundred playable characters. That counts both towards costumes and characters I would imagine. So you should have quite a lot of really cool stuff to play around with in the game. As well as that, they've also removed the in-game shop to allow you to buy characters directly from the grid. Personally, I think this is a really cool addition because it allows you to just buy a character and then plays them straight away just like the console version they're really trying to make the console and handheld version as similar as possible you know there are obviously limitations with handheld devices when you compare them to consoles but they're really trying hard you can really see that from what I'm telling you another interesting improvement is that in previous handheld Lego games they had one character and one AI buddy during levels however this time round, the handheld version can have up to four characters on screen at once in the story levels so an example an example of that would be in the Battle of New York in the very first Avengers movie, you'll have all the Avengers surround you and they'll all be doing their own thing while you're playing as Iron Man or Hulk or whatever. So that's really cool. So again, they're really trying to push the boundaries on the handheld version. They're really trying to push it as far as possible and you can definitely see that. And last but most certainly not least, we're of course going to be talking about the open world. So both the PlayStation Vita and Nintendo 3DS version feature five hubs on handheld in total. And that includes two alternative versions of Manhattan. One of those being a nighttime option for the time of day, which is extremely cool. Manhattan is also completely full size, one to one scale with the console version and has no breaks or loading times of any kind. To give you an example of what I mean, basically there's a game on Nintendo 3DS called Lego City Undercover and despite that being open world, it did actually have load times and breaks and all that kind of stuff. But in Lego Marvel's Avengers, whether you're playing on Vita or 3DS, you won't have any load times or breaks whether you're running, whether you're flying, driving, all that kind of stuff which is extremely impressive in my opinion. The city is also populated with traffic on the roads and pedestrians walking the streets. Obviously there won't be as much of that on handheld as there is on console, but it's still nice to know that the city is at least populated. You can of course get around the city with the Hulk super jumps and wall climbing, which is extremely impressive. I mean, I didn't think they'd be able to get that onto the handheld edition of the game, but that's just awesome. I mean, being able to take this game on the go and still have the city that you have on console and still have Hulk super jumps, I mean, that just sounds so much fun. Super jumps jumping on the go just that would not get old another way you can get around the city is of course quicksilver super speed and that is also in the handheld edition my guess is it will be a little slower than it is in console you know just because it's on handheld but i could be wrong i mean the fact that it's in the handheld edition is just really impressive and we don't know if daredevil's in the game yet so there might be you know characters that can swing like him i would imagine he is i would imagine that since he's in the console version he's probably in handheld as well but you know we will just have to wait and see. You can also borrow any vehicle you see in Manhattan, just like in Lego Marvel's Avengers on console. You can go up to a taxi and just borrow it and drive around, all that kind of stuff. You can do that in handheld as well, which is great. 
Or, if you prefer, you can actually spawn your own vehicles on any nearby road via the vehicle menu. What they did was they introduced a vehicle menu to reduce memory instead of having all the pads in the city where you can access all your vehicles. So I think that's really cool and it allows them to add much more to the game, you know, on handheld. And some of these vehicles include cars, bikes, tanks, and trucks. And if you're near a helipad, then you can choose any of your unlocked flying vehicles. I'm really impressed by the handheld edition of this game. I mean, the open world itself sounds just worth it. It really does sound worth it. Being able to have pretty much all of the stuff you have in the open world on console on handheld and being able to take it on the go, that just sounds really cool. Now, the handheld version of the game sadly doesn't include the random crimes which feature in the console version. However, there is still a ton of things to do in the open world, such as complete time trials, smashable challenges, and side missions. One of those side missions actually involves you playing as Doctor Strange as you fight ghosts at nighttime in Manhattan. I mean, that just sounds so awesome. On top of that, there are also collectibles, 15 extra challenges which are exclusive to handheld, and also an exclusive side mission story that is based on comic book characters. So really, I think the handheld version is getting a lot of extremely cool stuff, and I'm very excited to hear what you all think of all this content. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, personally, I think the handheld edition of LEGO Marvel's Avengers sounds extremely impressive. I mean, I'm just blown away by just how much they've been able to add to this version of the game. One of the coolest things I think about the handheld edition is that in the console version, you could be playing as the Hulk, super jumping around Manhattan, and then you could switch over to Vita or 3DS and do the exact same thing in the exact same city, you know. Being able to take that experience on the go at any time really sounds worth it. It really does. Alright guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots more videos real soon. And as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.